My turn. Come on. Come on, buddy. Meet Cole Johnson. So I've been volunteering here for six years now. He loves dogs. This is Cherub. We normally take him for a walk, and the point of going for a walk is to get them used to a leash. Oh boy, Cherub. So getting them used to traffic sounds so they're not terrified of that really loud traffic sound whenever they get adopted. Cole comes here every week to help get these dogs outside and one step closer okay. to a new home. To watch them open up yeah. and to be trusting to people and wanting to get attention and wanting to play and, and loving life, that's the big one for me. Loving life, that's what this story is about. You see, Cole keeps a very bright outlook considering that he is legally blind. Just slowly gone to where it is now, and it will continue slowly going. Look, other side, same thing. And they could go unstable, and I could lose, lose it all, you know, very quickly. Just trying to, you know, use what I have while I have it. Good to see you. Good How see you here. been? Good. You been doing all right? Mm -hmm. Good, excellent. I noticed that you're having some difficulty still kind of with the lights and light sensitivity. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Anything else? So it started out where he wasn't seeing as well, wondering if he needed maybe a change in glasses. Uh, I can't do the next one. That was not it. It was actually the functioning of the cells was degenerating, and that was causing the decrease in his vision and his function. I have cone rod dystrophy with ring scotoma. The cone rod dystrophy has to do with the retina. And this area has some splotchiness to it. So over a distance, my clarity and detail is worse and worse the further it goes. Same and five is worse. Worse, okay. Good. And then the ring's catoma. And tell me if it ever disappears. Right there. You. Right there? Okay. Is the big blind spot that goes in the round in the center of my vision. So I can see on the very outside and then there's a big ring or a donut that is blind and then I have the very center. It's kind of unpredictable. We don't know. Probably even do that little tiniest one. Am I going to wake up tomorrow and it's going to be decreased or diminished? Big, big, big eyes. Am I going to wake up, you know, in 10 years and not be able to see anything? Flash. But he's really accepted it well and he's doing as much as he can with his vision loss. It's awesome. Good. You can sit back and relax, I know. I got a little lip right there. Cole's day job is as a disability specialist. I'll measure the doorway. I'm familiar with all the laws and rules which just means a lot of measuring. 35 inches. And to make sure that people with any ability can get in. The only two things that I found were the door width is one inch too short, and then the handle itself needs to be one that someone doesn't have to grab it. I'm gonna use my phone to measure the slope. Cole is here to check the trail down to the park's waterfall. Is the water up or low right now? It's up. We've Got a little rain. All right. This trail right here that we're on, this is the Onion Creek Hike and Bike Trail. Uh, this is the most popular trail in the park. Um, and McKinney sees about 300,000 visitors a year. Uh, and we're always looking for ways to make it more accessible. About one in five Texans, 20%, have a disability of some kind. And for 20% of the population to not get to the falls or whatever it brings people to that state park, they should be allowed to get there just like anybody else can. Absolutely, it's just having a, a level of knowledge and then looking through that knowledge as a lens. 7.8% okay. slope right here. So what would be a goal slope? 5%. 5% and looking at how we can rearrange this or look at this in a different way um, to make things more accessible for folks. It's all pretty good. It's a little steep. If they just had like maybe one or two resting spots or maybe the slope was just a little bit better, not quite as steep, it wouldn't be much of a problem at all. Excellent. And to be able to point it out, you know, it turns on a light bulb for people and it, it feels great to be able to do that and to help people see stuff that they just don't see. Just like you and me, Cole has to hit the store. We are shopping at HEB for my groceries. Uh, I come about once a week, my housemate brings me. I generally know where most stuff is, not all the time. Jalapeno. Like for produce, I can't really see if it has a bad spot, so I'll feel it more. That one's good. And use my sense of touch more than my eyes. 
Tomatoes can be kind of hard. It has a little bad spot on it. I can feel it. Mushiness isn't necessarily a bad thing with tomatoes. That'll work. What may seem like a simple shopping trip depends on how my eyes are that day. Can sometimes get complicated. What in the hell? They moved my pasta sauce and I don't know where it is, so I have to take a picture and look for it on my phone. Um, I can tell that there's glass jars full of red sauce. I can't read any kind of words or labels. That's it right there. And it's right above coupons. It's right there, right where the aisle breaks. Cole takes the challenges in stride. That one. He's even more confident in the kitchen. So cooking has always been something I've always enjoyed ever since I was a kid. I don't really use my eyes. I just kind of feel around and I've taught myself how to keep my fingers out of the way. I use deer pretty much all the time. Knowing that, you know, I know exactly where this thing came from. I know how it was harvested because I did it. Garlic powder. That is important to me and I do, I do like that I have that knowledge of, you know, where it's coming from. It smells like cinnamon. They're a great combination. Time for cheese. I love to eat to begin with. <laughs> um, I also like to cook, so. I should be able to do whatever I enjoy, regardless of what vision I do or don't have. They're done. My eyes, they have influence on my life, but they don't control my life. So if I wanna cook, then I'm gonna cook. If I wanna eat, I'm gonna eat. And if I wanna hunt, I'm gonna hunt. That's just kind of been my life. My eyes affect me, yes. There was a fawn, but I think he ran off. But I'm still gonna do what I love. That's the bottom line. <laughs> I enjoy being out, just watching the deer, the birds, you know, whatever else is moving around. Just uh, relaxing. For scouting trips, Cole uses his tiny video camera to get a closer look. And I had this idea just, hey, what if I started recording? I can kind of record stuff that I can't see with binoculars. I can zoom in more. A few deer down there. I also have videos of a few fights that we've had. It's super cool. I mean, you can see it coming right before it happens. They get all big and stiff and ears tucked back. And a lot of people don't get to see that. It's cool to watch, for sure. Cole and his dad, Jody, have been hunting here since 2011. I uh, just fell in love with the South Texas brush country and everything down here will sting you, scratch you, or bite you, it doesn't matter. And in the cool of the evenings or the early mornings, it just transitions into like a huge zoo. There's so many different animals that come up. All kinds of different species, from tortoises to cottontails to bobcats to big white-tailed deer, and man, it's crazy. It's just the wildest place in, in Texas, I think. I mean, I'm just like anybody else down here. You got your knife, buddy? There you go. You know, some of the typical rank choice, filling feeders and getting firewood. <laughs> I'm gonna do 400. You're gonna shoot a 400? Yeah. Check them to make sure my rifle's, you know, good to go, accurate. Nice and slow. In general, I mean, I can do just what anyone else can do here. Bingo. Oh, I hit it first <laughs> shot, holy moly. He loves to spend so much time out here at the ranch. That's oh awesome. man, that is awesome. And he just uh, excels in it in so many ways. And it's, it's uh, just a wonderful experience to be able to watch somebody grow up and enjoy that part of their life. Man, great South Texas rare cold morning. Ought to be a good hunt today, right? Cole? Yes, sir. You know, kind of the primary bonding time I have with my dad. We both enjoy it. We have this opportunity to do it, so pretty much what we do. Got a lot of 
of deer, typically a pretty populated part of the range. Good place to be. To shoot safely, these two run down a checklist before Cole ever pulls the trigger. We identify what deer we're looking at. Okay, to the right of the feeder. Yes, sir. There's a good doe standing out there. You know, he knows what I want to know, and I know what he needs to know. You got her? Broadside. Mm-hmm. It just connects, and it really comes together, and when it happens, it's really a great experience. How do you feel? I feel good. Just because you have a disability, whatever it is, good shot. You can still get out and experience, you know, the outdoors and nature. Where to go? You know, you good can job. get out and you can do it. It's the greatest feeling in the world. Two, three, cheese. All right, man. You know, just um, the feeling to be able to watch him succeed and make any dad proud. And that evening, who do you think is back in the blind, enjoying the last beautiful light of one more day? To be able to see it now while I still can, but just to have it here and have the opportunity at my age with how my eyes are now, and just, you know, using the vision that I have while I have it. I'm not going to waste it.